Hey guys, JB Coins here with another video for you. Uh, you can see by the price tag on the screen, this is no ordinary $10 gold piece. This is the 1907 satin finish. It was graded proof, uh, proof 67 by NGC. It was actually sold in September of 2011. Um, and the write-up on this thing, if I read it to you verbatim, would probably make you sick to your stomach. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I'll just, I'll summarize it for you. Let's put it that way. Uh, the, the, the title on this thing is The Legendary 1907 Rolled Edge Eagle Proof 67 from the Frank A. Leach Specimen. The, the Frank A. Leach specimen, the single finest example, possibly a trial piece. Um, the 1907 $10 satin Proof 67 NGC, one of five gold coins in the present sale that belonged to mint director Frank A. Leach. Here we have another mint director with an extremely rare coin in his personal ownership. One of five that were at this auction, by the way. Um, it says the satin proof 1907 with period rolled edges uh, of, on the eagle is a monumental coin that ranks among the most important individual specimens in 20th century American numismatics. We have no hesitation calling the leech specimen the single finest example of the 1907 rolled edge 10 that is known today. And it goes on into the history, which is what we really care about. But even that is just full of all this sugary language. And, you know, uh, the, the, the thing that, that it, none, of the, none of these, of course, asks is what we always ask. And, and I see in the comments from you guys is why are the mint directors allowed to keep these coins? And why are they allowed to make these coins for themselves and their friends? And it seems to be a trend, obviously. This is 1907. We have the lady that uh, caused all the problems in the 50s and 60s and 70s, um, uh, you know, creating all the error coins that we love to collect now, but um, that didn't show up until after she passed away. In this case, the first example uh, came to sale in 1944 um, obviously quite a while after 1907, uh, probably long after, uh, Mr. Leach was retired from the mint. Um, the, um, the mint used this coin that the reason that they're saying that they think this may have been a trial piece, and it even says possibly a trial piece is that they went ahead and made these coins. They made 50 of them for special people in the coin industry, coin collecting uh, society and in government. And uh, there's been tremendous research about this coin. Uh, one of them is in the Smithsonian. And they say that the one in the Smithsonian is very similar to this coin, but not as nice. This is the only one in private hands. So uh, the rest of them are all in museums or governmental agencies or uh, you can't touch this. This is the only one that's in private hands. Later 31,500 examples were minted on the regular coinage presses. But then as with so many of these, uh, all but 50 were melted. The collar containing 46 stars used for the pieces struck on the metal press is different from the collar used for the regular production pieces and the edge is the key to identification. Uh, the lines on the front of the coin in, in the fields, they consider those to be polishing lines um, attributing to the pattern strikes and not from the um, dies. Um, they, they get into, you'd think they're talking about a wine. 
The surfaces are light yellow with brilliant satiny luster and heavy dye polishing lines on both sides, the latter separating this piece from all others. And they, they go on from there. Um, but anyway, this is the most valuable, and according to the powers that be, this is the finest example of a 1907 $10 gold piece. Now, I'm going to be honest, if those of us that are that are coin roll hunting and, and collecting for 40 50 years like me you know if if my grandma or somebody like that died and left me this coin I would probably look at it and say wow this is really a nice coin too bad it's uh, such a soft image and, and such a weak strike because you know you see the 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 brush marks and you see that the feathers are not very well defined and um, it just looks like a very light strike. It's not a, a high relief type coin at all. Um, and I see the rim. I don't see a rolled edge. Um, so I'm not entirely sure where they're coming up with some of this flowery language that they have. But um, A, I would probably obviously get this thing appraised and put it up for auction and be thrilled if I got $2.1 million for it. Um, you know, obviously it's never going to happen, but uh, B, it still begs the question, why are all these mint directors from, there's, there's a huge article that just came out about a mint director leaving in scandal in 1867 for basically doing the same thing for himself, uh, enriching himself by making collectible coins for himself and his friends. This article uh, on the research from that started with President Roosevelt actually uh, in 1921 demanding um, that research on these particular coins be done, uh, that we know so much about this particular coin and the 50 that survived and all 50 are still known to exist. So how wild is that? They melted all but 50, exactly 50, and there are exactly 50 known to exist. Wow. Whenever we see these, it's usually, uh, well, they melted, you know, like the Morgans. They melted so many tons of it uh, by weight, but we don't really know exactly how many they melted because they didn't really count. But on this coin, they did to the precise number of 50. So, you know, how does this continue? How does this lady in the 50s and 60s and 70s do this? How do we have people in the government working at the mint making coin collectible coins and and money for themselves enriching themselves and then turning around and blaming us collectors that you know we're making collector pieces it's just getting kind of weird but uh saw this one caught my eye kind of fit with with that debate that we've been kind of having a running conversation about it is a beautiful coin. Uh, the series is uh, pretty amazing. There's some specimens that are really crisp and clean and beautiful, um, but this apparently is the um, the mother, if you will, of of all of the rest of the series. So, um, hope you guys found this interesting. If you want, you can look it up on Heritage Auctions. Um, ha.com, as you can see on the bottom there. Um, and there's the lot number and there's what it sold for um, and uh, you know or you can just look it up probably on Google it's just it's just you know I think I'll just leave it there <laughs> don't want to beat the dead horse any further um, so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this found it interesting maybe a little infuriating uh, please continue to like, share, subscribe, and uh, especially in these days of demonetization. Um, we appreciate all your help and all your suggestions and all your contributions. And until next time, JNB signing off.